Failure's most successful strategy approach is what? So, the best way to fail is postponement. The Lord, I have spoken this message, it tumbled. But the Lord put an emphasis again that I talk to his people. Because this is the most dangerous thing in life. And I'm not going to allow it, especially here in divine worship ministries. Postponement, delay is the most dangerous thing. That's why I'm saying failure's most successful strategy in life is postponement. People postpone things because they want to fail. Every time you postpone things, fail. That's the most successful way of failing. You know, I'm using it on the other side. That's the most successful way of failing when you postpone things. Check most of the people in life that have had problems is either they were told about something the most extremely important. They knew about it, but they postponed it. They kept saying, I'll do it. They kept saying, I will do it. They kept saying, I will do it. And every time they kept saying, they will do it, they kept failing most seriously. When people are taught and they are given counsels, they keep postponing that counsel. That's the most, the most successful way to fail. That's why I say, failure most successful strategy approach or approach is what? Postponement. What we call? Procrastination. Or what? Delay. I have a question of reflection here. What holds people back? Can we talk? What do you think what holds people back? Yes. Huh? What? Fear. Do you agree? We bury it. Give me another example. Yes. Lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Worry, which is still under fear. Comfort. Mm -hmm. Past experience. Okay. Yes. Yes. Laziness. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Understanding. <laughs> In the way of pride. <laughs> Doubt. What else? Attitude. Yes. That's what it is. So we, all of us know what holds people. Luke 24 verse 25 it says, He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to, of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Repeat again. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. These were the two men in the way to a mouse. People are talking that Jesus has risen from the dead. Now Jesus meets them, he becomes the third person among their company. As they are walking, they kept saying, they are just talking and discussing. Jesus looks at them and said, what is wrong with these people? He said, you people, fools. Slow in your heart. What do you think makes people up to be very slow? Now, let's look at this. Look at this. The fact is that there were two men. What was their real problem? Their real problem was not in their head, but in their heart. Their real problem was where? In their heart, not in their head. Read verse 32. And verse 38 of still, uh, the same, same chapter, 24. 32 says, They asked each other, 
were not our hearts burning within us mm-hmm. while he talked with us mm-hmm. on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Mm-hmm. 38. 38 says, He said to them, Why are you troubled? Mm-hmm. Why do doubts arise in your mind? Why does doubt arise in your mind? When doubt arises in the mind, it has nothing to do with the head. It is the heart. That's what people don't know. That's why Paul is telling us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What he's saying is the heart needs to change. The problem is the heart. Because the heart is what governs everything that we see. Have you ever seen people singing from the mind? But the heart is not functioning. But the day the heart starts functioning, the mind captures. That's what it is. The words start making sense. I can start singing. You just see someone start singing. But he's not even there. Thing is singing in the mind. The heart is not. But the day the heart starts hurting, you find words start getting its meanings. That's why I tell you there's a problem with your praise. Because your praise shows that the heart haven't understood. When you start understanding, when I'm singing, what is Ushindi? The mind started basically pushing my body to react to give the form of it. Of Ushindi. Ushindi cannot be like this. When the heart starts speaking, the mind starts transferring to the body by saying Ushindi means... I, are you understanding? That's where you find people have a problem because the things are recorded in the mind. Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Which means, the heart must be touched. Jesus looked at the same said, foolish, slow. You are slow. You don't believe. You are slow in your belief. They could have discussed the subject for days and never arrive at a what? Satisfactory what? Answer. These are people who don't move. Do you know the people that you know? They stay at the corner of your avenues. They discard matters every day and they don't move. Africa has a delay because it has spirit of holding back. That's why they can walk and discuss matters at parliament and nothing moves. Because they don't build by the spirit of moving and acting. Believe me or not. That's what it is. We are slow. The heart haven't understood. What they needed was a fresh understanding of the word of God. Say fresh. Something to refresh them, to bring them back to the place whereby the heart will start speaking and then the mind is understanding. And that's what Jesus started doing, doing to these people in the way to a mouse. Now look at the observation. Jesus opened their eyes and they realized that Jesus was not only alive, but right there with them. That's the problem with you. Say, that's what the problem with me. That, yeah, that's my problem. Say, that is my problem. The day you start understanding that Jesus is not just talking, but he's there with you, you no longer hold back. That's the problem. You hold back because you think Jesus is in heaven seated. <laughs> you hold back because you, you know you're looking for Jesus, you're not seeing him. Their problem was Jesus opened their eyes and they realized that Jesus was not alive, not only alive, but what? Right there with them. People that married without a job, like this one seated here, he realized that Jesus was not only alive, but he was with him. If I'm going to lie, you stop me. 
I remember Alan telling me one of these days. He said, Pastor, me, if I was still where I was those, I would not have been married up to now. Am I lying? What is he saying? He's not saying that he found people. No, he's saying that I discovered that Jesus was alive and he was right there with me. That's why I made my move. When you don't understand that Jesus is right there with you, you won't make a move. Some people are too scared. You said fear. Fear holds people back, isn't it? You are too scared because you don't even believe that Jesus is right there with you. That's the problem. You see Jesus like a remote God who is, is in business with other people, not you. <laughs> Say a lie. Refuse that lie. We are going to silence those lies in the name of Jesus. You need to silence it. I see ladies walking. How old are you? Oh, 37. 38. You see, you're walking like these people in a mouse. Holding back. Go for prayers. You don't want to go for prayers. And you think that... The only thing you don't know is that your husband is just right there. He walks with you every day. Yeah. Because you haven't realized that he's there. Go to Cataloni, pray. You don't want to pray. You still have those ideas of ancestors. Who told you that you cannot pray for your husband? The only thing that you will not do is tune. Don't go and tune your husband. But who said that you cannot pray for your husband? Fools. Slow in your heart. You have more privilege. You have more other priorities. We talked about wrong priorities. True or false? Jesus opened their eyes and they realized that Jesus was not only alive but right there with them. When you start understanding, you won't hold back anymore. Now let's talk about the here and now. That was that was that was you see why we need to do biblical interpretation? Yeah. Don't hold back. You've been holding back so much. People need to know biblical interpretation. That was there. You see, Paul can't talk because he was not there those days. We used to talk about this thing. You need to bring those things back. That was there. There and and then. Now this is now the here. Here and now. Now let's talk about ourselves. Today's basic problem is what? Unbelief. Say unbelief. That is the biggest problem we have here. Not only with the world, but even Christians. And belief. Someone will prefer even to fear a uncle who's standing ahead before you than the God who is in heaven. The mind is telling you he's where? In heaven. But the truth is that he's not in heaven. He is right there with you. You know, when we do this thing, do you even get scared? When you do, God tells you things, you do the other way around. Do you fear him? That is right there. You know, your mind lies to you that God is not seeing what I'm doing right now. This unbelief is mostly built by wrong perspectives. Say wrong. Wrong perspectives. Mm -hmm. Someone said that here. Wrong understanding. When you have a very wrong understanding, your life will hold back. That's why you need to choose who surrounds you. That's what you're saying. Listen to me. People hold back, not because they just want to hold back. Even the teachings, the understanding that you get from others, that we tell people, choose who surrounds you. Choose what you hear. It is extremely important. Jesus said, be very careful of what you hear. How you hear it and where you hear it. That's the biggest problem with unbelief today. Let me tell you. A pastor who married because he had 700,000 in his account. He will have nothing else to tell you. He will tell you that's how it works. He will tell you, young man, sit down until you get a job. That will give you that money for you to marry. 
and you will count the years. You will be 40 and we will call you. So show our youth. So show our youth. So show our youth. We'll call you. So show our youth. That's what we will call you. We don't want to call people Shoshozi or Guka. Uni Guka wa youth. Hmm. 42. Man, you should, have, you should have married when you are 25. So mostly bid by what? Wrong understanding. Let's open the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7. We read from verse 4 to 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. From verse 4. The heart of the wise is the house of mourning. But the heart. Uh -uh, repeat that. Don't be go quick. Repeat again. Verse 4. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. Now stop it right there. What do you think about that scripture? You know, when you read the Bible, understanding will step in you until you start questioning things around. Are we together? Repeat that verse again. What do you think about it? Verse 4 says, The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. What do you think? Someone talk to me, please. Can someone talk to me? The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. How come the wise people are in the house of mourning? Me, I think, this verse should have gone this way. The heart of the wise is where? In the house of pleasure. And then the heart of fools in the house of what? Morning. How come it is the other way around? Verse 5. It is better to heed a wise man's rebuke than to listen to to the songs of fools. Hey, what do you think the word is saying? In biblical interpretation, especially with books, artistical books like uh, Ecclesiastes and all the Song of Solomon, Psalms, when, let me give you a secret in biblical interpretation. You will always find that the verse, the first verse, is always explained by the second verse. It is always the repetition it's tried to explain what it has said, number one. So read verse one and continue, you will see. Verse four says, Verse four, sorry. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Uh -huh. But the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. In the house of pleasure. Now, the next verse will explain that verse. Continue. It, it is better to heed a wise man's rebuke uh -huh. than to listen to the song of fools. Songs of fools. That's what you are saying, Israel. This is what happens. Many people are in the house of songs of fools, songs of entertainment. A place of entertainment, you learn nothing. This is what happened to you. You will be mostly built by wrong perspective of life. Because you will walk in a church. The only thing they give you is entertainment. Where I had gone, someone tells me, Pastor, we have been called to pray for Kenya. And the only thing that we went to pray for Kenya, I walk in. The pastor says, you know, this is a youth church. If you are an old man here, you need to understand. Here, the only thing we do, we entertain ourselves. We dance and we... Yeah. The guy just fell out of the place. He took his wife and left. That's the council of fools. Songs of fools. And that's why you find that young people are not going anywhere. You find that guy is 30. He's still sagging his jeans and he's in town with chips surrounded by girls. Oh, Pasi, Pasi. You're 30. You'll be having, you, should, you are supposed to be having two children by now. You are 30. Should have been married. Actually, you are supposed to be a president. Of this nation. Yes. You don't believe it? You don't believe it? You're 30. You'll go and join your friends in school. 
you walk in, you, you're just saying like, hi, how are you? Say, hey, how are you? Are you are you from Africa? Oh, yes, yes. I'm from, from, from Africa. Oh, okay, okay, cool, man. Come, come, come. And, and then the, the school is over. You see them driving with his wife, but he's 25. You, you're 28. And you have no even pro, any project of marriage. Him is already married, but he's your friend, and you're sitting in the same classroom. You have projects. Yes. Yeah, no problem. We are here. Wait. When you'll be 60 and your first boy is 14, you've already retired and you have not finished school. You wait. You know, that's, you see these people sit under the council of fools. He think he's wise. You know, that's exactly wrong perspective. That's what I'm talking Actually, you helped me because you are a very good example. Keep sitting there. That, that's, that's the perspective. You sit under wrong perspectives. Your understanding is beaten. So you hold back life. Are we together? You do what? You hold life back. Can you continue reading? Verse 6. Like the cracking of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of fools. This too is meaningless. Seven, what about? Uh, seven says, Extortion turns a wise man into a fool, mm -hmm. and a bribe corrupts the heart. The end of a matter is better than the beginning. The end of a matter is better than what? It's beginning. Do you know why the Bible says that? Because time will tell. Time will do what? Will tell. And patience is better than pride. <laughs> Hello? Chapter 10. 10 verse 1. As dead flies give perfume a bad smell, <laughs> so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. Repeat that again. As dead flies give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly of, of outweighs wisdom and honor. Continue. Verse 2. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. To the left. What do you think? Powerful wisdom in the Bible. But I'm going to come to you. Let's continue. Most of the Jews in those days saw Messiah as a conquering redeemer. Not as a suffering what? Suffering what? That's what they saw. Hello? That is what they saw. They rejected him because they had a wrong what? Perspective. When you have a wrong perspective of things, your life will be beaten. Young man, <laughs> you know, today people are sitting and let the internet teach them. Then the Bible teach you. People sit down and let the internet teach them. So most of the Jews in those days saw the message as a conquering who? redeemer, not as a suffering, suffering servant. Someone who has such perspective can never teach you about suffering. He will tell you when you suffer, you are under curse. Throw it. That's why they missed the Messiah. Open Isaiah 53. What were they reading? Who was teaching them? Please read. Isaiah 53 says, Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He Are you seeing what it's saying? Who has believed our message? This was supposed, this must be a revelation. It's not something that you will just get it. It must be revealed in you. And continue, please. He says, verse 2, he grew up before him like a tender shoot mm. 
and like a root out of a of dry, dry ground. Mm. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his presence that we should desire. In his appearance. Sorry. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Now step it. Just stop it there. Suppose if Jesus had to marry. Eh? Na manzi hapa. Manza hapa kuna beautiful ladies. Imagine my sister. Jamasi juu trouser kupi huku ni ndefu. Hajapaka mafuta. I'm just trying to imagine what the Bible says. There was nothing beautiful, nothing in his appearance that would draw you to him. Because we know you people today, ladies. The only thing that you go is like when you see a 4.6 Range Rover. Kama kakuku. There was nothing good in his appearance that would draw you. If you went to his church, you would not stay. There was not the pomp that everybody is looking for. There are ladies seated here that have postponed men in their lives. I don't know, I don't know what they are looking for. Mwanaume amekuja. Uko tu hapo. Ah, pasi. Hata we mwenye pasi. Jamaa taji kiingereza. <laughs> the Bible says there was can you read it again? Are you hearing what the Bible says? It says like this. That one the internet won't tell you young man. Yes. <laughs> I told you today I would use you as the example of wrong perspective. <laughs> Verse 2. <laughs> He grew up before him like a tender shoot. Like a tender shoot. And like a root out of dry ground. Uh -huh. He had no beauty or majesty. He had no beauty. Listen, the things that men put, that you feel like, he had nothing like mine. He had no watch like mine. Beauty, the things that people put to attract others, he had no. Mm -hmm. Which means for you to know who he was, it was only by revelation. No wrong perspective. No wrong understanding that would have taught you about that. Until you get the revelation. That's why some women are seated here. You don't have husbands because you don't pray. A man comes to you. The only thing you do, you... Yeah. Yeah. I you know God has spoken to me about you. <laughs> That's how men, women are these days. They keep postponing. They keep postponing. They keep postponing. They lay back. They think they are getting younger. You wait. Huh? <laughs> In Africa, Mali. Unaeka hizo vitu zenu mnaeka kazi nakaa ni kama blanket hiyo. Zini ina 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 kan. Hizo vitu zenu mnaeka kama umesimama the whole hour. Uko tu. Una una unatafuta kuziba. Unatafuta kuziba. Unatafuta kuziba. Then unatembea jasho isha kupiga. Unaona tu vitu zinaanguka ni kama Kuna miaka inafika kama aingiani. The time is now. <laughs> ah, you think you remain the same? Look at her. Uh, you see how she is? I used to see her kitamba. Now she's... <laughs> you wouldn't even force. You tell her you are walking wrong. Why are you walking like that? So how do you want me to walk? <laughs> you see, he make more than belly, more than Yuma. The guy in a suit. He doesn't want even to identify with the wife because the lady. <laughs> the time is now, man, to know your husband. Let me show you. Please stand up. Please stand up. I'm going to get you some examples. Stand up. You stand up.
なんだっけなあまそらなったこんなジブズメトロフオケあ、ヒブニュー私はジスマミア When I met this guy, if I remember very, if I'm wrong, you tell me I'm wrong. You're not working. Yes. Jamal k w a m e Sota. Anyone else can Sota. But the wife was working. When you got married, were you working? When you met him, was he working? <laughs> When you met him, was he working? When you met him, was he working? Student. Where were you going to die? When you met him, was he working? He was a, a student. Is he still a student today? <laughs> today he's a doctor. Is he still a student today? This is one of the leaders. Today is feeding you even spiritually. Did you ever knew that this man can stand and one day and preach like that? Fools when you walk by sight. That's what happens. Fools when you have wrong perspective. You are of reading only what the internet tells you. That's why they could not read Jesus. They could not understand Jesus. I pray that my daughter s here. You won't walk like that. You understand what I'm saying? A man approaches you. You tell him, thank you. Give me time to pray. Go, ask God. Even if he's in slippers. This man was not working. Today he drives a Subaru. Did you even know that he will drive a Subaru? Please sit down. You see, we, we, we walk by sight, but we forget that the things of the inside are by revelation. You may see someone today, but you don't know who he will be tomorrow. When I married that woman, my wife, I took her in a bed sitter. I took her in a bed sitter, a bed sitter. I was, the only thing that entered was a mattress. Viombo zina lala inje. Imagine wachawi hata waneza kuja wafanyo vitu. Viombo zina lala inje. Tunukua na ingia kwa nyumba. Nikingia. Nasu. Kuma. Mulangu nikua na funguka ndani. Si inje. Nasu. Kuma yu matres. I hold. My wife comes in. Then the children come. Ah. Uzi. Uzi. Nona Juma, ameona hiyo picha. Nafikiri huyu ameona hiyo picha. Unajua kitu mtu akielewa kutoka kwa roho, mind na capture, ina transfer, ameelewa. Eh. Wrong perspective. When you walk, you are taught by wrong perspective. I went to ask the elders. Or my former church that I'm getting married. One of the elders, my God, he stood in my way. He said, no! We are going to allow him to marry. He doesn't have a job. Huh? No! I could not fight him. I knew he had a wrong perspective about marriage. Him, he grew from a rich family. His father gave him money to go and multiply. He worked hard. He had money. That's why for him to marry meant have a job, have money and save. But for me, I had an understanding. It's not my might, not my power, because might might be money. It's not my power, but it's by the Spirit of God, says the Lord. And when the Lord opens my eyes and I know that He no longer lives in heaven, He's with me here. As long as I do his command, that Obo, I will finish. That's 
That's why people, pro, uh, they, uh, they, they keep postponing. They delay things because they don't see. They have a wrong perspective of the way they've been taught. That marrying by faith exists. The just shall live by faith. If you have that, you will live. Most of the Jews in those days saw Messiah as conquering Redeemer, not as what? Suffering servant. When we don't like suffering, we hold back. We forget that there is no success without failure. There is no good businessman. Show me any businessman or woman who has never had failures. You hold back, you die. Show me any good businessman who has never failed. Show me. Suffering is part of it. That's why Jesus, the Bible says, there was no beauty in him. There was nothing in him. Things, you know, there was nothing that would draw us to him. He had no beauty. A man familiar with suffering. That's why the scripture will say that the wise lives in the house of mourning because that house is a house of suffering. It's a house whereby there is reflection. There is a house where you sit down. You do a self-evaluation of yourself. But a house that is full of party, full of entertainment, no one has time to sit down and think. You will always think you're a child. That's why you find, go and check those churches like Mavunos. You see young people. Someone is 32. The guy doesn't even understand that he would have been married by now. Father, he is extremely late. Listen to me. You can never change God. The way God has built the society. Listen to me. That's why there was a day you slept and you woke up and only to find out that you had reached the age of puberty. Or do you think it is a coincidence? No one reaches the age of puberty at 25. Did it come at 25? Did it come at 25? Eh? You just woke up in the morning, oh daddy, I don't understand what happened. Things happened. What, what happened? It's building you. You've reached the age of puberty. That's why things are developing in you. Or you think it's a joke? This thing that people get down here. Did it come at 25? Why do you think God put it at the right age? Because God is on a timeline. Because God is on a timeline. Did you see people getting children at 70 and they are rejoicing? There is a time frame of everything. That's how life is. Even the world, the society, has planned things in relation to the world. To the way God has built things, they know that by this age, you need to finish university. By this age, you need to start thinking of getting a job. You need to start thinking of settling. But that doesn't mean if the society has gone away and things have gone wrong, that we sit and then we just lay back. But we lay back because we are wrongly taught, wrong perspective of life. These people had a wrong view. They were seeing the crown, not the cross. If you're a Christian, you live a life that the only thing you see is the crown. You refuse the cross. You will never dare move. Jesus said, anyone who would like to come after me must take up his cross daily, deny himself, and do what? Follow me. The teachers in those days were just like some of the success preachers of today, blind to the total message of the Bible. Someone teaches you today, but is blind to the total message of the Bible. Jesus looked at them. He told the two men in the way to Emmaus. He said, it's like he's asking them, who was teaching you? You claim to be Jewish, but you don't read what has been written. He said that the Christ will suffer, shall die and rose again. Fools, slow, which means delay, postponement. You are not reading 
When someone doesn't read the Bible well, don't stay around them. They will tell you what the world says. They won't tell you what Jesus says. Are we together? They are slow. Slow heart to believe. Not quick to perceive. Dull of learning. The pastor is in entertainment every day. He walks in the church. One time I was in one of the churches. You know, this of liberals. I went to do my internship. Do you know what? I see this guy. They call him his service leader of the service or something like that. The guy comes to me and the hey, maker. Please, please, you need to help me. <laughs> I'm in trouble. I only have two days. I need to plan the Sunday service. He said, so, so what is the problem? No, no, I need to plan the Sunday service. Because you know, and, 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 and the pastor told me, we, I was thinking of having a, 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 a Congolese Sunday. I said, so, so what is a Congolese Sunday? No, a Congolese Sunday. Where can you get me some Congolese bands that come and then we just have a team of Congolese. I see you people wear kitenges and all that. Oh, so I said, the service is no longer of the Holy Spirit. It is now for the Congolese. One of the pastors they used to have, you know him, you know, I don't want to say the name. He left the pastorship, he went to politics. When the pastor is leaving the pastorship, going to politics, what do you think is that? That man has never been called a pastor. Do you know what that man did? He brought Sarakasi in judge. Our Mioto. Church. And he let a Sarakasi. I sat in church. Machozi ilikuwa na nitoka tu. Nikasema, this is church? They don't read the Bible. One Sunday morning, their senior pastor came in. The church is 1,600 people. Their pastor came and entered. I knew today is a powerful day. People are praying. He is seated behind the pulpit. You know, it's a tent. So he's just writing, writing. Then he finishes. I see ah, cars are coming, cartons. And people who came and they're driving over logs. And, you know, wamekuja na, na, how do you call it? Is it like a police officer? Huh? Not Fuzela, not Trumpet. He's our Toto. No. Huh? Balloons. They brought balloons. So many of them. I don't understand what is happening. I just see the pastor. Now today we would like to come before the Lord in repentance. And the Lord shall really help us. Please let us repent. And then uh, the ashes are passing with small, small papers. Take, take, whatever you've been struggling, trust the Lord. Just write it on that paper. And then, the papers, at least take one balloon. Then the police. And then uh, we fung a pokwa balloon. Then come with it. And then they went all of them outside. They hold them together and they release the balloons. My God. Lord, as these balloons have been released, just the same way that we've been also released these things. Where is it in the Bible? Be very careful. People put wrong perspective in you. That is not the Bible. <laughs> then a Christian goes back, he masturbates again. He wonders what happens. <laughs> hey, hey. Slow of heart to believe, not quick to perceive, dull in learning because they don't know. They don't know at all. They have no idea. Now, let me look now on some description here in development. Let's do this. There are those of us who always say they're about to leave. Who always says, I'm about to leave? Pazi, I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave. Check the people who always delay. They will always tell you. Even this one this morning was just saying, I'm about to leave. But he came to church 11. Postponement. Lazy. Check. People 
who live like that to achieve in life, there are some opportunities that you can never get. God might take you in advanced countries sometimes. If you live like that, you are just about to leave. Where are you? I'm about to leave. Such people don't leave. Where are you? I'm about. I'm about. Postponement. It is of the devil. We are waiting until things change. Which things are going to change? Things are not going to get better. We are waiting for the Antichrist. Who, who are you waiting for? <laughs> Tell me, who else are you waiting for? The Holy Spirit is here on earth. He, he had already come. Unless you are waiting for the Antichrist. He's the one who's going to bring things in a different way. First Thessalonians says, when everybody shall cry for peace, peace, something destructive shall hit them. That something destructive is what? The devil, the Antichrist. But see, I'm waiting for things to change. Until there is, there is more. There's no more time. Every one of us has 24 hours. Who has 26 hours? Me, I've been feeling like we need some 26 hours. It's never going to change. What you can't do now, you'll never do it. It is now or never. I want to praise this woman. She was introduced in the Bible study by Akasi. As she came violently, she walked in and she listened. She said, ah, Yanni, this is the perspective that you have here. That I can pray for my husband. She didn't delay. I see prayers. Prayers. I want my prayers. She went home. She knew that it is her prayers. I see my prayers. Hey, I'm like, why you be dear for now? I see my prayers. She went to Catalonia. She came back. Now she's married. A beautiful baby. And she's aspiring for other things. She has no time to waste. Some of you are still here every day. There's still more time. I'm waiting. Pasi, I'm waiting for things to change at work. Which things? They are going to get worse. The next boss is even going to close more doors. There is never time. Time is now. Time is when? That's what they do. Until we are less tired. Have you ever heard such word? Until I am less tired, Pasi. <laughs> until we get a promotion. Until we settle down. Listen to me. If I had come in this country, I have very good reasons to sit down and say, ah, let me just do what the little that I can do. Some little mission there. Some little mission there. You see some friend pastors of mine, they come here. You see them. You Israel, you see them sitting here. They still wait for the permit. For them to preach, to advance the kingdom of God. Let them wait for the work permit. As we travel, we come in while we are waiting. It will find us ahead there. Stop postponement. God is not a God of postponement. The more you postpone, the more you postpone. Oh, I will do it. I will do it tomorrow. That's why you find you lay back. You become poor, lazy, and there's nothing you will do. You keep postponing. Study, go to school, you don't want to go. Do this, you don't want to do that. Listen to me. Me, I would have not gone to school. And I knew that day, I stood at Nairobi Cinema. A young man, today is even a pastor, called Mandera. At Pastor Moniki. He came with some forms. Some forms. Look at what happened. He came with some forms. Actually, every time we meet, he tells me, big bro, it is you who grabbed my chance. I said, which chance? I said, there's nothing like chance. I grabbed what God had given you. Not chance. I grabbed your blessings. Do you know that young man, he went somewhere. Someone gave him these forms of East Africa School of Theology. He gave him. He went through them. Ah! 
He felt like he was not ready. He postponed. While I was, he was coming to Nairobi Cinema, I'm coming downstairs. We met. He told me, look at these forms. Uh, why don't you ever look on them? I took them, looked at them, went through them. I filled them. Look for all the recommendation that, were, that was needed. Took the form. Took it to East Africa School of Theology. And then they gave me a call. They said, come for your interview. I went for the interview. I passed the interview. They told me to come for the orientation. I came for the orientation. Now, the day I was supposed to go for school, I was supposed to pay 32000 I had 8000 I stood at the same Nairobi cinema with 8,000. A mind told me, you cannot do this. Do this. Take this 8,000. Go to Winton. Pay. Because I wanted to do professional, professional keyboard. Classic. Classical. But I sat down I said, this God who took me all the way, will he not do it? Ah, I went and took a matata. I went. I reached... I asked for the business manager. They said, no, you can't see the business manager. You've just joined. I said, what do you mean I've just joined? He said, please, I want to see. They went inside. They talked to him. He said, come in. I went in. You know, I think you were there when we were talking about this story. With the business manager today who is a friend. He's a, he has a church. I have preached in his church. I went and told him, you people teach us to live by faith. Yeah, that's the perspective. That's the perspective they've been teaching us. The just shall live by? Yes. I took the same word. Inside. Sir, but you told us to live by faith. He looked at me and said, this is man. But that's what you taught us in the orientation. That this life is by faith. When are you going to pay? I don't know, but I will pay you before the time finishes. Irene, he called the lady. She used to be called Irene. Come. Give him books. I was given books. Walked to school. That's how I did my undergraduate program. Bible and theology. Went for my master's. The same, same principle. No postponement. The just shall live. Because that is the perspective that my mentors taught me. They read the Bible. They saw what the Bible says. And they transferred it to me. Be very careful who speaks to you. What you hear matters a lot. Faith comes by. If someone tells you for you to marry, you need to have a job. You need to have 500,000 in your account. You will marry when you are 40. You might not even marry because you might not get that job that will bring you 500,000. Be very careful. You may get a wrong perspective and it will damage your life. And you will sit and lay back and keep postponing. Postponing. Oh, we can't do this. We don't have this. We can't do this. We don't have this. That's the language of the world. They want to crush you because you don't have it. You will always be told, don't do this. Don't do that. Do you have it? The word is always what? Until we get a promotion. Until we settle down. The word is what? Until. 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 Until when? Open your eyes. Jesus is right. Right there. It's always seen that there is something made, there, 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 there is some major event that must occur in our lives before we begin living. What is that? It has already occurred. Jesus. 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 That's what it is. That's why me I say in this church. Remember postponement. You were some of you here were supposed to be leaders. You keep postponing. You keep postponing. Postponing. Oh, until then, until I marry. Bob has been saying until he marries. That's when he will start serving. Until, 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 until you do what? Beware. Beware of what? One of these days is real. None of these days. If I stood that day and I said I'm not going to school, it will be none of these days. I went with the 8,000 and I was supposed to pay 32,000. Now let me tell you the worst. When I was doing the master's program, I had 1,000. And I'm driving in. I, missed, I, I, I met Pastor Richard driving out. I asked, 
this man is an accountant with the ministry of, of uh, local government. But those days of Mundavad, is it Mundavad? Huh? Eh? Eh? Yes, Kibaki's government. The guy is driving out. We meet at the gate, East Africa of, uh, School of Theology. Eh, Pastor, yeah, yeah, I mean, these people. Eh? We were supposed to pay, I don't know, 42 or 45,000 for that time. He said, I brought them 27,000. They are telling me that they can't take it. Okay. And he's driving out. Now, someone who has 27 is driving out. You, you're walking in with 1,000. I drove. I said, that is his cup. Mine is different. Wah! I came out. And now we are meeting Dr. Lowenbach, Muzungu, a white man, business manager. I walked in. Sir, so, sir, so, hi, hi. I'm, uh, Pastor Pian, are you fine? Yeah, I'm fine, sir. So, we talked, we talked. And then I said, so tell me where. Sir, so, I've come for school, but uh, things are not uh, that well. You understand family issues. I know, oh, you know, I'll be very unfair. I've sent others. Now you are coming. How much do you have? I have 1,000. That was an insult. <laughs> what wrong with you? No, 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 no. I can't do that. I said, sir, listen to me. Why can't you do that? Is it my first time here? This is my second year. Why are you treating me like I'm not going to pay? When I go home, what am I going to do at home? No, Piana, you're always good in talking. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, sir. Please, I have come for school. Please, I want to study. Okay. Go, go, get books, but don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. We have different cups. It's up to you. What are you seeing? Yeah. Different perspective. He me has a The other one, he had a different perspective. Me I had a different perspective. Mine is that the just shall live by faith. I knew I was not walking alone. I was walking with Jesus. That's my perspective. Stop delaying. You need to be leaders here. That's why some of you can't own this church. You still have the idea of hey, the, the pastor Congolese. He, yeah, that is his is, is thing. I am going. You wait to touch two kilos. You could have been with your pastor. But he's gone. You've been postponing things. Then you are put here. You find all members walking out. It was boring. This is the time. Stop postponing. This is the time. Learn. Arise. This is the time for prayers. Have power. Anointing. Do it. What are you waiting? Oh, you're waiting for another pastor. The day you're going to get another pastor, bring him inside. He will treat you like a stepmother. Have you ever seen a stepmother the way they treat you? That's it. Your own house. She walks in. What are you doing here? Go in the kitchen. Go and eat in the kitchen. <laughs> when mommy used to hear that day you'll care Pastor mommy used to hear this one not like this this is the time arise and shine arise and do what ah, keep postponing that's your problem if there is a hill to climb don't think that the waiting will make it any smaller have you ever seen those people, there's a hill to climb? They're just saying, hey, pass it tomorrow. It will not be smaller. It will still be as it is. The best thing, start. Start climbing. Because failure is a product of success. You will not need it. Don't sit down and say, hey, hey, pass it tomorrow morning. Pass it tomorrow morning. In a cell meeting, in a small group, you are given a chance to preach. Preach! Don't say, hey, I didn't prepare, please, do tomorrow. You fail. Fail. It's better you fail. Are we together? No postponement. If possible, make the decision now. Even the action will be in the future. You want to go to school? Don't start talking about money. Talk about getting forms first. Talk about getting what? Forms. Any forms appear what are cool? Just a forms? Peleka forms. You will know, even if you don't get fees, at least 
You're already, the day, now it's no longer about doing again the interview. Your name is already in, in the system. The day you'll get money is just to go. Now you've been waiting. You've been waiting. Waiting until you get money. Until you do what? You get money. Until you get money. Money is not coming. And you've not even gone for the forms. You allow yourself to be in school. Postponement. I came in this country. I didn't know Swahili. I didn't know English. We came with some Congolese here. They kept postponing to speak the language. You find them, they are always in syncretism where Congolese are. They are in a foreign country. Jesus, let me tell you, hear what God told the Jews. He said, you are gone. You've gone to where? Where did they went for captivity? Where? He told them, don't think you'll come back tomorrow. You will stay. Build. Leave. That's what he told them. When you see some people doing very well, because they went, they learned the language of the people there. That's why Paul will do very well. You, you go in a foreign country, you are just there in syncretism. Now, 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 call you to be a great preacher. To which preacher, to which people are you going to preach in Lingala? The other one was there the other day. I was telling him that you're going to preach. He started looking for interpreters everywhere. <laughs> Can I get an interpreter? He's been here for the last three years. What are you learning? You keep postponing. You postpone. You postpone. You postpone. Me me look out in check. Then I come and I just for your wrong perspective. When was I born speaking English? I will speak. You will not stop me. Today I speak. And I preach. Why am I ski? I went in Israel. I found in Israel that I didn't have a job. You know what I was surviving with? Translation. I walk in a conference like this. And I'll take basically like this. I'll do translation in French. I'll do translation in English. And they will pay me per day $70. You don't know how God is preparing you. Stop this thing of postponement. You have a gift. You have a talent. Learn. Push. There is something you can do right now. Do it right now. Stop postponing. Don't sit and lay back and do nothing. Attack postponement by doing what? Eliminating all what? Excuses. That is laziness. Oh, Pasi, you know, and then Did you go for prayers? Eh, Pasi, this week, too busy. I will go for next week. Who told you that next week you will not be busy? The devil knows that he will make you busy. The violent take it by force. No more postponement in the name of Jesus. No more. Eliminate all excuses and reason for not taking decisive. Uh, decisive and immediate actions. When something presents itself, you look at the priorities, you say, this is what it is, and I'm going for it. And you go for it. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's what you do.